Welcome golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you my top plays for the 2021 AT&T Pro-Am. And sad to say, but this tournament uh, already did not have that great of a field and it is getting worse by the moment. If you've not heard, Dustin Johnson has withdrawn. You got Matt Kuchar withdrawn. Wyndham Clark has withdrawn. KH Lee is withdrawn. And who knows by the time I'm done recording this, I am recording on a Tuesday around two o'clock. Good thing I waited a little bit. Um, who else knows withdrawn and hence you can see there John Daly is actually in the field, which is amazing. Last I saw John Daly, he was selling his t-shirts and whatnot at a Hooters out of his RV. And I can't tell you the last time the guy played in the PGA event. But with all that said, there is some things. Um, there's going to be no amateurs, of course, so it's the AT&T Pro, um, which was going to allow them to lengthen the, the course a little bit. As I kind of mentioned, it's going to be over, a little over 7,000 yards. Um, to make it a little tougher test and on a side note also we won't have seven hour rounds and the coverage should be better we're going to get shot tracker uh, on monterey which uh, doesn't typically happen so there are some positives to take out of that and we are going to now dive into analysis if you are new to my show i appreciate you greatly for stopping by i think you're going to get a lot of analysis that you're not going to see maybe for some of the other guys um and I do things a little different, maybe not as entertaining, but I'm going to do my best to uh, add some entertainment also into this. All right, so if you missed my preview show I put out yesterday, I can summarize very quickly the skill set that we are looking for. So this is the shortest track they play on the PGA. You also got the smallest greens. Um, if the wind blows, you know, it's a whole total different course, but uh, I haven't checked weather. I'll check that tomorrow and that'll be on my uh, sleepers phase and projections. Uh, but in short, it's not about getting off the tee with length. It's just hit the fairways. And then from there, it's sticking your you know, your approach close. If you miss, because these are small greens, you've got to be really good at up and down. But really, it's going to come down to the putters. Whoever's putting on POA on these fast greens are going to be the ones that come uh, out on top. Um, and that's it from a you know skill set needed. I also am looking at some comp courses. Typically, of course, we'd love to look at Spyglass and Monterey because that's the two closest but we don't have shot tracker data. You can only get, you know, greens and reg, fairway and reg. So I'm leveraging uh, TPC River Highlands. I think that's the closest we have from a comparison where they play the Travelers. It is a par 72. It is POA. It has less than 7,200 yards. And then from kind of a coastal perspective, uh, I think RBC, Harbor Town, and the Sony Open we just saw at Wailea, you know, not the exact putting services, but they are less than 72, and you can – also deal with some winds coming off the ocean. So that's what I'm going to be looking at to see how some of the guys perform there, just to do a little further analysis. And then if you are new to me, um, the first thing I do is I will go over, you know, who's doing best from a recent form. This is looking at just stroke gain analysis and looking at the past 24 rounds. If you're not really sure what stroke gain analysis is, in short, this is every time they go out, these guys are measured against the other players in the field in all these different categories from tee to green, ball striking, short game, off the tee approach. So how are you gaining or not gaining against the competitors? And then it's all tracked and put into this. And that's how you can really do deep dive analysis. This analysis is actually being brought to you by Fantasy National. Um, if you would like to go there and get a discount, I will reference Pat Mayo. Uh, just type in Mayo and you get like a 20% off. I do not have a coupon code yet to give you guys, but that is in the works. Okay, um, as I mentioned already, they're also typically what I'm looking is to build like a core 30 player pool is what I'm looking to do. And I do that by doing correlation through some key areas that I think is going to be where you're going to be successful. And the first thing, of course, is recent form. Usually I have guys highlighted and there just wasn't enough correlation from the different things that I looked at. But there are some guys that, I, you know, it popped up a few times. But like Malinati, I'm interested in Max Homa. Is interesting. Uh, Harmon, Matt Jones, um, Tringali, uh, of course, Cantley. Um, you know, those are the guys from a recent form that I'm interested in. And then, you know, I like, first thing I always do is go look at the history. You know, I don't weigh this uh, as, you know, the end all be all, but history is key. And then what I'm doing here is putting a custom stat model against that. So the three areas I already mentioned that I'm weighting heavily is approach around the green, the putting. Uh, fairways gain and then proximity from 100 to 125 and 125 to 150. Of course, any pro on tour can hit the ball at least 280. And then it's from there because these are shorter holes. Of course, that's the shots they're going to have in and closest 
guys that can get to the pin, the better shot you've had making the putts. Pretty self-explanatory. You got a couple par threes over 200, and they're going to have to go low. Average score here to win is around 19 under. So birdie or better opportunities gain, and then converting those opportunities. And then I threw in ball striking T degree just to, to level it all off. Now, again, typically I've had guys highlighted here, but I didn't see a lot of crossover. But again, guys, like I bet Neesmith outright. I like Chase Seifert had a good round here last year, and I say a good round. Uh, so did uh, Harold Varner. I had a really good, nice first round, went look pretty low. Of course, Berger pops up, so there's some correlation there. Uh, I like Streelman, and we're going to talk about these guys. And, of course, Snedeker's had good past success here. And then what I did is you, know, you put on some filters, and that will bring up the comparative courses against that same stat model looking at the past 24 rounds. You're going to notice that some guys have more history than others. Uh, of course, Streelman pops up again. Uh, Neesmith, I like. I have an outright bet. You got Chase Seifert. Uh, RCB, Rafa Cabrera-Bello. If you don't know who this guy is, this guy used to be one of the most elite approach iron guys. Um, he's been around for a while, but uh, has been popping up recently, and I'm going to talk about him a little further. I think he's live here at this event. Um, yeah, so that's about it on that. And then if I just turn on and just look at elite, who's elite on approach? So that's just ranking. That is the number one thing I want to look at. Um, of course, Neesmith popped up again. Chris Baker, uh, he was, I think, a rookie coming out on here and did very well. Streelman again popped up, Malinati. So there is some correlation, um, but just wasn't enough where I was, you know, going to go through and highlight those guys. And then putting on POA, uh, and I turned on the fast green, so they're going to be fast POA greens, and then ranked, you know, who's the top 20 out of that. And Nate Lashley is an interesting uh, that that popped up. Uh, Nate, you know, showed up well in his hometown, home courses. Um, he did, you know, of course, uh, won the rocket mortgage. Um, you know, the guy, when he is on with his irons, he's one of the best, uh, but it's just been off and on with him. Um, so anyways, just kind of an interesting note. Of course, RCB popped up again here, Snedeker, Baker again. Um, and then Maverick McNeely, uh, also I actually have an outright bet on, I think, uh, he's interesting also to look at. And then some other analysis I wanted to just talk to you. I don't know how, you know, some of you folks, uh, let you know myself, I don't file the European tour that closely. I keep an eye on it. But when I see things come up that, you know, I'm like, hey, this guy's playing in this tournament. What kind of success has he had if he was playing across seas? Of course, DJ is all withdrawn. So this is kind of worthless now, but um, it's here. Of course, he won the Saudi International. Actually, it was bad with the putter. I was actually going to fade him as... If you are typically a subscriber, the number one player, I typically fade. Hence, you know, he's he's played this tournament so many times. He's never won it. I think he always plays it for Wayne Gretzky. Um, and he withdrew for the tournament, supposedly because he wanted to get a breath of fresh air before he goes plays the Genesis, which is the next tournament in California. I honestly think why he withdrew is because, you know, amateurs cannot play in this. Hence, his father-in-law, Wayne Gretzky. I think he played in this event quite a bit for him. Lives in the area, loves the golf. It was a way for them to go out and, you know, have some fun. And once he was not able to play, I think DJ just said, you know what, I'm going to take a pass. I just got a player's fee. I just want a, a boatload of cash winning the tournament. Just don't need to do it. Uh, but you had Tony Finau again come in second place, no shocker. Uh, you had Victor Hovland playing this. You also had Bryson DeChambeau, which I believe came in 20th. Um, so just some notes. Uh, Fleetwood, I think, also played in this, uh, but did not top 10. And then the previous tournament, you had uh, Paul Casey win the Dubai Desert Classic. Um, it, this field was not as strong uh, from a PGA perspective. I, again, I think Fleetwood played in as Sergio Garcia. But Paul Casey is going to be here. That's why I'm bringing it up. Great iron player. Uh, it's all whatever happens with Paul. And they're usually pretty distance-wise off the tee, long and accurate. Uh, it's a nice combo. Um, so I like Paul Casey. I think he's going to be a live play here. And also with the field we got. Um, you know, it was pretty easy to go through is just start narrowing these guys down. And I brought up Rafa Cabrera uh, Bello. Um, I call him RCB. So there's a lot of other folks. Why am I bringing him up? Okay. So he played in the Abu Dhabi, uh, that Terrell Hatton, uh, beat out Rory. And that was a few tournaments ago. He came in fourth place and it was a pretty strong field. And so, you know, you saw some good lights. He had a, a bad, uh, round three. 
But, you know, shot in the 60s, the other one. Um, he, in the Dubai where uh, Paul Casey won, he had a 35th. And again, had a 66, which, you know, nice round there. Um, he ended up 33rd in the Saudi uh, that DJ just won uh, and shot 69 straight across the board. And he likes to put on POA. So Rafa Cabrera Bell has never been super sexy long off the tee, but he if he's on, he'll hit the fairways. The guy could be elite with the approach. And, you know, the putter is typically where he will struggle some bit. But as you see, putting on POA is his favorite. So I'm definitely going to be playing him, and I bet him outright. Then I also just brought up Jim Furyk. You know, he was, uh, used to be like with Matt Kuchar, could just be your bingo free spot, someone that you could plug in, going to get you to the weekend. Probably not going to win a tournament, but he, you know, could be up there. But just a side note, you know, Jim has been showing some life, of course, and this is on the Champions Tour. Of course, he won his first two events there uh, until then Phil came and then started winning all the events when he would play. But he just played at Pebble Beach and won um, at the uh, Pure Insurance Championship. And I just wanted to note this. Again, it is the Champions Tour, but it is at Pebble Beach. It is recent, uh, and he shot 12 under. So what I'm saying with that is, hey, if you're looking for a guy, I think cost-wise he's you know, in, around the 7,000 uh, range. Uh, it's someone that I'll probably plug in uh, on a GPP. And I haven't even looked at his betting odds. I might take a look at that, too. Just you never know. You know, look at Steve Stricker. Um, you know, you had uh, Stuart Sink win. You know, I put Jim Furyk right around in that range uh, who won the Safeway. Uh, but right off the bat, no shocker, you know, and you're going to see here one of the things that I was looking for is guys, of course, that could putt on POA uh, and then also tournament history. And we'll look at recent results and then just jump in and see how they did uh, at the Travelers and, you know, just some of those comp courses stuff. All right. So Patrick Cantley. So his history at this tournament. He's played here four times. Uh, recent had a T11. Again, hits all the boxes. The guy is a great putter. Uh, he is great at approach, of course, at the American Express. I believe that's what it was. Uh, you know, had that crazy Sunday and almost, you know, had a chance to to win that thing. Um, so, yeah, if you actually look at here, you know, ended up with that second place finish. And if we dive into some of the details real quick here. Um, you know, Poe is not his best surface, but can play in some wind and it can get windy here, of course. Green across the board in all the areas we want. Um, you know, won the Zozo back in October. And if we just go in and look at the Travelers, if I can type. You know, it's had great, you know, past history there. Uh, top, you know, top 15s and a better. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it's any shocker. Uh, if we look at RBC, you know, he had a third there. You know, so the course fits again from that perspective at Harbor Town. And then what was the other one I was going to look at the Sony? I don't know if he's played in the Sony now. So again, all reasons, and I'm, you know, I don't think there's any shocker um, that you want to, you know, definitely with DJ out. Uh, Patrick Cantlay is a great play. I mentioned Paul Casey. Um, you know, his tournament history here is a good fit. He likes playing here. He had a second place in 2019. You know, that T64. You know, it is what it is. But uh, you know, from an approach, you know, 25 ranked out of this field. Uh, also on Poe, I don't think it's his favorite surface. Let's go take a quick look. Now, it's not his favorite surface, but, you know, I've seen guys. This area I don't like to see, you know, in Paul's game, I mean, he's not losing a ton, but you can see here recently at the Amex, he gained around the green, even at the Zozo, he was a little positive. Um, so, you know, I'm going to let that go. But, you know, Paul Casey is someone that I will be looking at. Daniel Berger, again, not a shocker. We don't have a lot of elite guys, but, um, you know, from an ownership pr projection, it's still saying 16. I was just curious of, you know, what happened uh, at the waste management was going to get anybody off this guy because, you know, uh, he just looked like ho-hum, um, that he could care less to even be there by day two. Um, you know, and also he missed the cut there, but, you know, he's showing that he's got good history here. And, of course, fits him. Daniel Berger, this is where he should exceed. Uh, and he should have done well at the waste management, too. Um, you know, but that's that's golf, man. But he likes POA. Uh, if you look at his splits, gains on POA. Can play in the wind if it gets a little windy there. Um, the three boxes that I'm going to be heavily looking at, approach around the green, putting, you know, pretty solid. Um, yeah, there's no reason not to like Daniel Berger. We can go look at the Travelers. So he missed cut in 2019, but had a second in uh, 2017, a fifth. 
So he's had some good history there. If I look at RBC, he had a third in you know 2020. Again, a good comp course. And then the Sony, I don't know if he goes. Oh yeah, so he had a seventh this year. So again, you know the comp courses I'm looking at, everything is pointing in the direction that Berger should have a good tournament. Jordan Spieth, you know, I got to plug him in here, and I, it's pretty rare that I play Jordan, and and I think you know it's probably going to be probably heavily owned. Um, you know, the price is a little ridiculous, but again, it's the field. But you know, it's a comfort course. The guy does well here. Of course, won it in 2017. You know, I, I, there's no reason why I would say don't play Jordan. Um, you know, the guy even from a perspective of just from a points perspective, you know, even if he you know gets a top 20, top 30. Usually he outperforms his, you know, finishing uh, because the guy can just get on those birdie streak bonuses. Um, Poe is not his favorite surface, but he's a good putter. We know that he's elite on approach and around the green. It's off the tee where he struggles. But hey, guess what? We got crazy large fairways and you don't have to be long. You can literally just hit his three wood out there. Hit hit whatever you're comfortable. Hit 260, 270 and, you know, let the let this game, the approach and all the rest do what you need. That's all you need at Pebble Beach. And if we just go look at Travelers, you know, he won the Travelers again back in his heyday uh, in 2017, but recently had a 54, so he made the cut, even when he was struggling. If you look at RBC, yeah, he's had some decent finishes, but of course, you know, recent form, uh, not the best. And if we look at the Sony, he missed a cut in 2019, but had a third in 2017 and an 18th. So again, you know, that is a play of likes the course, uh, Good at the areas that we are looking for. So Jordan Spieth, I will be, uh, you know, will be in my player pool. Kevin Streelman, um, you know, had a second here, and it wasn't even while I was on him. Uh, had a second and a six. So the guy, you know, getting a comfort course, but you can see that's a pretty hefty price to pay. But projected ownership is crazy up there. But you know, again, on his splits, he loves Poa. Um, well, shouldn't say loves, but it is his best surface. Can play in the wind. These two areas made me a little nervous, so I kind of looked and just did a little more. But, you know, again, we like his approach. He was around the green. He's got some greens. It's all about, you know, can he do better with the putter? If he gets hot with that putter and Poe is his best surface for what that's worth, uh, I think Streelman is live. If we go look at the Travelers, you know, he had a second here recently. That's probably another indicator on why maybe his projection ownership is so high. If we look at the Sony been a while since he's played there but he had a 51st way back and then of course if we go look at rbc was what we were gonna look at so he's had some really nice finishes that course just fits him right just need to hit the fairway don't need to be long got to hit your approaches yeah he had a miscut in 20 but you know a third a seventh a six so again like strillman was he's gonna be in mine of course max hama has been showing you know pretty solid recent form this course fits homa um, you know, he can just hit that three wood, even if he's, you know, a little sporadic with the driver. It's done well at this course in the past. Um, and Poa is his favorite putting surface. So you can see that here. And that's, you know, where he will struggle is with the putter. Uh, can do okay in the wind. Um, that's good. And, you know, he's got some green on the, the area here. And if we just go look at the Travelers. Well, not so good at the Travelers. Miss cut. But let's see about RBC. He had a 41st. And at the Sony, he had a 6 in 2015, but he missed the cut recently in 2019. But again, I'm going off. That's more of a recent form play and off the POA. Uh, Phil Mickelson, you know, tournament history, ridiculous here. The guy, you know, he can be in terrible form and then just come to this course, Pebble Beach, and just rip it up. I talked about that on the preview. POA is a positive surface. And Phil has been struggling a little bit with the putter. Um, but you can see how much, you know, where he gains almost a half a stroke on the field with POA. And as I mentioned, struggling with the putter recently, but typically, you know, it's good to see at the farmers on approach and he was gaining on the putter around the green, which, you know, where Phil should always be pretty solid, uh, did lose a little, but you know, I'm not concerned about that, but yeah, Phil would definitely be one of my plays. Tringali, you know, tournament history here. Not been the best, um, you know, not not terrible. You know, he's made four out of five cuts. But he had this third at RSM, which I liked. Um, you know, and I'm seeing these teen finishes. I've always said the guys that are in the teens uh, coming into a tournament seem like those are the guys to watch out for uh, from a winning perspective. He loves POA as uh, his best putting surface. 
If it gets windy, he might struggle a little bit, but you can see his stroke gain analysis is on, all the way on the way up. You know, green and the boxes we want to see approach around the green, putting. He had a crazy putting round. Yeah, at the Shriners, we gained almost uh, seven strokes, which that's a little abnormal for him. Um, but, you know, he is a, a good putter. If we go check out the Travelers, best with a 15th way back, but he had a 71st miscut recently. Let's see the RBC, miscut, miscut. So I'm not really building a whole case for him on a comp course side, am I? Uh, and the Sony, yeah. So funny enough, if you look at the comp course stuff that I was pulling, not the best, but everything else uh, is telling me that I like Tringali. I'm going to be sticking with it. You can make your decisions. Uh, Brian Harmon, uh, it's been kind of off and on, not as good as Brian Harmon can play. Uh, but he's had, you know, a decent history here, but it's been a while. Uh, what I like about Brian is that I know when he gets the putter going, and he can, he's a good putter, uh, that Poa is his favorite surface. He can also play in the wind. He's not long off the tee, but typically pretty accurate, but good around the green, and he's always usually gaining on the putting. Um, so I think it's a great fit from that side. Travelers, he's had some great experience, as you see. You know, a lot of top tens at the RBC. Again, he's had a history there. A couple top 10s, 28th recently. And did he play in the Sony recently? He had a fourth in 2018 and a 56 here recently. But again, for the field that we got, um, I'm going with some Brian Harmon. Matt Jones, um, you know, he's had some nice history. He had a T5 here last year. Um, you know, recent results, he's made the last five cuts. Best showing was at the Sony, which is one of the comp courses. All the guys I picked, I believe, are positive. Well, oh, I didn't even get that out of my mouth. So he's a little negative on POA, but can play in the wind. But again, what I like with Matt is that, you know, he can gain on approach. Um, you know, the putter, except for the most recent, has been positive. So the, the, the areas that I like, um, I think we already saw the Travelers. No, we didn't look at this one yet. So some decent, I don't know, you call it mediocre. I mean, at 19th uh, in 2018, but, you know, not bad history at the Travelers. The RBC made two out of three cuts. And uh, what was I also looking at? Oh, the Travelers, RBC, Sony? The Sony. He likes the Sony. Um, so I have... Two missed cuts there out of us all this time. So, again, I'm looking at Matt Jones. I like him. Peter Malinati, you know, he's been playing great. Um, funny enough, he just he's struggled on, you know, the Sundays or the weekends. He comes out, I mean, hey, if you're playing Showdown Monday, uh, Thursday, Friday, you know, just plug him in. It's it's almost a, a smash. He's had pretty decent tournament history here. Had a, a T11. Um, you can see his projection ownership is already showing a little higher. Uh, of course, his approach is good that is what we're looking for and he is positive on poa if it gets windy maybe that could be an issue but you can see the uptick on the stroke gain lately and you see this three boxes almost all green those are the three areas that i'm looking and if we plug in the travelers pretty decent you know uh 50 makes the cut and then you know had a 26 would be his best rbc best finish with a 16th in 2019 but Made to cut, barely. Um, there. And what do you do at the Sony? Yeah, so the Sony, a 14th and a 12th. So, again, like me some Malnati. Snedeker, his form hasn't been that great. Um, you know, did all right. The Farmers showed up at least, made to cut the Masters. But you can see this, you know, down low is actually a lot of the putting. Tournament history, two missed cuts. So, you know, you can see his projected ownership right now is a 5%. So, I think it's going to be, I don't say a sneaky play, but, you know, if you can get him at low ownership, I think he could do something here. I don't know if I bet him or not outright. I think I did, but he's almost gaining over a half a stroke when he puts on POA. He can play in the wind, as we know. Um, you know, he's had that, I think it was the comeback win uh, where he gained a ton of strokes. Now I'm forgetting the tournament. It was a recent tournament, too, that uh, he won at. Uh, but, you know, his it's kind of, we'll say flat, it's at least increasing. You can see around the green and putting is where he's elite. Approach could be a little better. Uh, off the tee, you know, he's not gaining a ton, but, you know, that's not what I'm worried about. And if we look at the Travelers, solid form there. Recent, a couple 40s, but, you know, he's had some almost top 10s previously. The RBC at an 11th. Uh, miscut recently. And then if we go to the Sony, miscut recently, but it has done well at the Sony in the past. 
Um, so again, it's all going to come down. You know, if Snedeker, almost like Keegan Bradley, I kind of look at those two guys pretty similar. I mean, Keegan's probably a better off the tee and approach, but um, you know, I, and then I would give Snedeker the the better putting, but. I don't know. Sometimes they just perform well at some of the same tracks and at the same times. And then RCB, I mentioned, of course, uh, his tournament history here. You know, he had a, his best would be a 22nd, he had a 26. Um, you know, recently at OHL, he had a cup, but, you know, a couple a couple made at the RSM and the Masters. You already know that he likes to put on POA, gaining almost a quarter stroke. He can play in the wind. I mentioned his recent form because this isn't going to tell the picture, and that's why I went and looked at the European information um you know where is he at recently uh i would go more off the european but again that's against you know some pga guys but also against some european guys if we pull up what he's done at the travelers uh recently in 20 he had a, a 37th we go look at rbc he had a 16th in 2019 but two missed cuts and then we look at the sony nothing on the sony but again i'm gonna play some rcb and you're just gonna have to make and then you had Rory, of course, who, uh, you know, at the Waste Management, you know, came out and shot that six over and then shot seven under. Um, I'm not worried about that. You know, he had some really nice uh, farmers in the Amex. You know, I'm, I hope people get off him uh, because of this cut. And it looks like right now that could be the case. And if we go click on Rory, and of course he is not positive on POA, but can play in the wind. But, you know, you can see on all surfaces, you know, he could be a really good putter. He's just a streaky putter. Um, and you can see that right here. He has been gaining strokes putting, gaining around the green. Uh, recently, last five events, gaining on approach and off the tee a little bit. If I pull up the Travelers, not so hot. I mean, you know, he's got quite a history there. I guess the best was the 18th, but that was so, so long ago. RBC, just recently, he had a 20th uh, or a 21st and 20. So that's good. And then uh, the Sony, what'd he do? Missed cut recently, but you know, other than that, he's had a pretty solid history there. So anyways, um, yeah, liking uh, liking that. And uh, Maverick McNeely um, was someone else that I'm on here. He's had a T5 here and a cut, missed cut. And, uh, you know, kind of sporadic, of course, on what he's been doing uh, from a recent results. But if I remember correctly, Maverick does. He's gaining over half stroke on POA. Again, we got to, you know, that's a big concern. If it gets windy, maybe a problem. Um, I didn't like, you know, this so much, but uh, I'm going off just recent form. And, um, you know, he's had some decent, you know, the Houston, the Bermuda. If we pull up the Travelers, not that one, but the RBC had a 58th and the Sony didn't play. But again, I don't like a Maverick McNeely. I'm going to go with him. Okay. Of course, I think Cali is going to have a top 10 finish. I think Berger is going to be in a top 10. Casey, so some of the bigger names. I think Homa is going to surprise us, get it there in a the top 10. And then Malnati. Uh, this could be a spot. You know, he's been close at times uh, in recent to win. And, you know, this could be a, a spot for him. The field is weak uh, comparative to what, you know, we've been seeing recently. Top 20, Jordan Spieth. I think, uh, you know, he'll keep some form. It's a comfort course. Of course, Phil always does well here. So I think he can get a top 20. I like Brian Harmon for a top 20, Tringali for a top 20, and then, of course, uh, Ron and out Streelman. And then uh, for the 30th, we're bringing in Rory, Snedeker. You got RCB, I already mentioned, Matt Jones, and Maverick McNeely. So that's how I see it unfolding. And I appreciate your time. Like, again, like, I don't want to get down on this. You know, it is an amazing course. It's still going to be a good tournament. There's going to be positive and negatives. Um, but I think we came off, I think, like I said, one of the better tournaments to watch at the Waste Management. But excited. Hey, we still make some money at this. Again, I've got um, the promotion that I'm running, the $100 giveaway. Again, if you're not a subscriber, click the subscribe button. Click the like button. Tell me who you think is trending on the way up. Who's training on the way down? I'm going to put all the names. I've got a bunch of responses already, so keep it coming. And put that in my uh, just random generator. Whoever spits out, you're going to win $100 to do with whatever you like. Hopefully, you put it into some of the, the tournaments. But, hey, uh, whatever your heart desires. And I really appreciate your time. All the best of luck to us. I will be putting out tomorrow my sleepers, the fades, and ownership projections. So check that out, and I'll talk to you guys later.